Hello, Hensby here. Get your popcorn, get your large Coke, get your crispy M&Ms. We're going to the fucking movies. Hi, I'm Lily Hensby. Remember the name. I love movies and TV and all that's in between. I know everything about every movie ever. Not really, but I like to think that I do. Mostly pop culture films. So this podcast is me watching a movie and just commentating throughout. So you might want to set up the same movie and watch along as I talk. You know, if you're a bit lonely in a lockdown or something like that. Uh, this is not rated G. I swear like a sailor. So get ready for that shit. But um, yeah, I mean, what else are we meant to fucking do? Locked in? I just thought maybe this would be a little bit of a, a little bit of a fun time for me, as I love to talk and talk about things that I love. So first episode, I'm gonna watch my number one favorite film, Back to the Future. Now, obviously, spoilers, if you have never seen Back to the Future, don't watch along with me. Jesus, watch it in your own time. Really take it in. Okay, I'm going to click play and we're just going to start. Back to the Future, 1985. Now, this movie goes for an hour and 56 minutes. I'm not going to let you listen to me for that long. I'm going to shorten it up and probably skip over bits. If you've never seen Back to the Future, it is about a young kid called Marty McFly and he's good mate Doc Brown. The logline is after he accidentally drives a DeLorean time machine from 1985 to 1955, Marty McFly races the clock to ensure his future parents fall in love. This movie was made by Robert Zemeckis and Steven Spielberg, my two best mates. How are you boys? Now, the opening, we've got a clock ticking. I don't know if you can hear that and I don't know if this is going to be copyright. We'll get there when we get there. Anyway, scene opens. We've got a clock. So many clocks. Tick tock, tick tock, don't stop on the clock. Starring Michael J. Fox, a beautiful man. A Gemini, but a beautiful man. And Christopher Lloyd, a fucking sick... I don't know his astrological placements. This That's also what I'm going to do in this. I'm going to have like know about the actor's astrology. Crispin Glover is in this. He has played every freak in every film. If I've ever seen a film with Crispin Glover, you know he's going to be a little bit freaky. And like, not in like a sexy way, in like a, uh, okay. Now, the news is on and it says that there is a case of missing plutonium from the chemical place. So that's an, that's an important plot point, that there's plutonium missing. Remember that. Now we're meeting Marty, sexy boy. He's like, Doc, where are you? Hello, anybody home? He's got a skateboard. He's got these sick Nike shoes. Denim on denim on denim. Oh yeah, this was written by Robert Zemeckis and Bob Gale. Marty puts his um, skateboard down and it rolls over to a to like under the bed and under the bed is warning plutonium a big case of plutonium hello now marty's plugging in his guitar to doc brown's massive like i've been to some festies you know i'm a festy head but this is a speaker look at that speaker look at it if you're watching along look at that fucking speaker that is ridiculous looks like a it looks like a bank vault like that's how big it is he's got his little shiny pick Doos and he goes flying back. What did he think was going to happen? You pump up a speaker, like an experimentally large speaker. What did you think was going to happen, Martin McFly? You idiot. But he looks so hot. He's got these aviator sunnies on. He's got his denim jacket. Oh, Michael J. Fox. A fox. Okay, so Doc Brown's just rang... Doc Brown has rang his own home knowing that Marty will be there. And he's like, hey, Marty, I knew you'd be there. Weird. And so he's like, meet me tonight at 1am at the Two Pines Mall because I got a little sneaky secret. And everybody's so okay with the fact that a 17-year-old kid is hanging out with a... What's Doc? Like 50s? People said 60s. And now we've got Huey Lewis, this sick song. The power of love is a curious thing. Uh uh-uh. uh. And now we get this beautiful setup. I guess, yeah, like an environmental c- cinematic cinematography thing. And we get to see the town of Hill Valley. And because it's 1985, it's pretty fucking gross. Like it's a small town. Is it? Where's it meant to be? 
because this isn't a real town. This is obviously in the Universal Studios back lot. And you can go and visit it if you go to Universal Studios in Florida or Anaheim. And I've been there and it was sick. Now, this is his girlfriend, Jennifer. And this actress isn't in the other two. Now, we're meeting Mr. Strickland. He's the principal. And he's like, I'll get you, McFly. You've got a problem. You're a slacker. You're a slacker, McFly. He hates him. I remember your father when he went here and he was the same. Slacker. you got slacker parents. You know, if there's something wrong with the pup, there's something wrong with the bitch. That sort of vibe. Now, we've got the actual Huey Lewis, the man, as like the guy who's doing auditions for the school talent show. Oh my God, I've never actually looked at the other band members because I'm always so focused on Michael J. Fox. He, they, oh, I love an 80s man. Ding, ding, bam, bam, da, bam. Huey Lewis cuts him off. He's like, shut up, enough. Too darn loud. And you know why they're too darn loud? Because Marty McFly's eardrums are probably burst from his little thing this morning. Now, Jennifer's sort of nagging at him, and then he looks at other women in aerobics uniforms. Okay, Marty, not a problem. Man, we've copped some shit as ladies, haven't we? Now he's looking at a car that he wants, 4x4 Toyota. Toyota. Someday, Jennifer. Someday I'm going to have that car, and we'll take it up to the lake, and we'll fuck in the back. So sick. Yeah, Marty, get laid. 17? Yeah, people were fucking at 17. And now they're kissing. Now, the clock tower. Very important. There is an initiative by the mayor to replace the clock. But this old lady's like, please save it. Donate some money. And Marty's like, fucking whatever. He's a quarter. Go away. Gives him a flyer. It's story building. We're getting little plot points along the way. We're learning... You know, they're setting it up. They're giving us, you know, all the little information that we need. Now, Jennifer's written her number, well, her grandma's number, and then written, I love you. Ah, Jen. Jen, you little saucy minx. You little saucy minx. Now, Marty's just gotten home. And he's walking inside. And there's a tow truck coming in. And there is the McFly car destroyed. Now, he's walking inside. And we meet Biff. So Biff borrowed the McFly car and was like, you didn't tell me it had a blind spot because he was the one that crashed it. What an asshole. And now, yeah, McFly Senior is this little dweeby, wormy man. And he's like, you need to pay. And Biff's like, I need to pay. Go fuck yourself. So that's rough. Biff's a fucking dog. But when we go back in time, he's hot. Is that problematic of me to say? Yes, because he's an asshole and he's a he's a sexual assault person. <gasps> Lily, get help. Now Biff says say hi to your mum for me, not in a rove live kind of way, in like a weird sexual way. And yeah, Marty needed the car for tomorrow to go to the lake to fuck Jennifer. So now he's really sad. Now we're meeting Marty's siblings. We've got Linda and she's like, what's her vibe? She's just like a sad woman. And then there's Dave and he like works at McDonald's or whatever. And now we meet mum, Lorraine, Lorraine. We meet Lorraine. So what, what, um, what's happening now is we're seeing the image of, you know, a lower middle class white family who like are a bit down in the dumps, like they're, they're scraping by. But they've got each other. You know, they're rich in relationships. And now Linda, the sister, is like, oh, Jen- Jennifer called you, Marty. And now Lorraine, the mum, is like, I don't like her. I hate her. Girls chasing boys. When I was your age, I never chased a boy or called a boy. She's like, I was a perfect little saint. <laughs> oh, were you, Lorraine? Were you? See, it sets up all these lies. And all these things that then get revealed. That's how you write a script, people. People who want to start writing, set up some stuff, then go in and reveal that stuff however you want. That's it. There you go. There's fucking, there's three years of a writing degree done. You're welcome. Oh, and now she's reminiscing about when her and George met and George is um, McFly Senior. And it was a beautiful romantic time and we loved each other and, you know, he was just a little little boy and I was a little girl and we, we went to the dance. 1955. 1955. It's like 100 years ago. 
yeah, so the thunderstorm was that night. You know, it's all, they're planting seeds. Now, it's 12.28 a.m. P.m.? A.m. P.m. A.m. Wait, he's on his way. Skateboarding. Twin Pines Mall, 1.15 a.m. He got there right on time. That's hot. Punctual people, hot. Um, and now we see a little fluffy, scruffy, shaggy dog. And that's Einstein. Hi, Einstein. Now, this bit's cool. We've got a big truck, right? And then there's like billowing smoke coming out of the top. And then the back of it opens and it's coming down. And there's epic noises, transformer noises. And sparkly noise, music. The diddly, diddly, diddly. And Einstein's like, huh? And it's coming down, and it's all smoky, billowy. That I'd be like, that's on fire. Dun. Amazing music. And out of this scene is beautiful. And out of the truck rolls down a DeLorean with a bunch of crap on the back. Oh! Now we're doing a pan over the DeLorean. Dun, 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 dun! The door opens... Doc Brown steps out. Doc has synced up Einstein's watch and his watch and he's put Einstein in the DeLorean and now he's shutting the door and he's like, Einstein's going to go to the future. Doc has a little remote control and he's like remoting, controlling the DeLorean around, like making it do fucking whip kings and donuts and shit. Now the sickest line, when this baby hits 88 miles per hour, you're going to see some serious shit. Now, he's pumping up the remote control and the DeLorean's back wheels are like turning. It's burning rubber. It wants to go 60 miles per hour. So, miles in Australian is fast. I think 60 miles is 100 Ks. So, 88 must be. Yeah, yeah, fucking quick. Now, the DeLorean's going so quick and it starts like, it's not exploding, but like lightning stuff is going around it. And then, boom, it disappears and there's two streaks of flames. And now Doc is like, holy shit, I fucking did it. 88 miles per hour. Very cool. The Marty is just confused. This is probably my favorite bit in the movie. And Marty's just like, you, f- you killed a dog. I'm pretty sure I just witnessed you killing a dog. And he's like, no, 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 no. Future. Time travel. Um, and now the DeLorean's back. Pew, pew, pew. And it arrives. It's been a minute. And now the DeLorean is covered in ice. So there used to be a ride. I think it's still at the Universal Studios in Florida. But there's the Back to the Future ride. I didn't go on it when I was there. But my nan had this old VHS of like... She had one called A Day at Disneyland and like a tour of Universal Studios. And I used to watch both those VHSs every time I was at my nan's. Oh yeah, Einstein's all good. Anyway, yeah, this um, this VHS, it'd show you all the rides at the theme park. And the Back to the Future ride looked so sick. But you hop in the DeLorean and you have to chase Biff because I think Biff has taken... The DeLorean, and, or there's two or something, I don't know. But, um, or you're in the train, you know, the train at the end of the third one, those who, who have seen the Back to the Future trilogy. Um, anyway, and you tra- you're chasing Biff down and he keeps changing where he is. And so you go back to 1955, then you go to the future, and then you go way back. And you go way back and you see some dinosaurs and a big T-Rex like chases you and nearly kills you. And then you make it back to Hill Valley and you stop Biff and the day is saved. What a good concept for a ride. Cool. Now Doc is explaining the science behind it. He's got the flux capacitor. Does anyone remember Dennis the Menace? I know I'm switching up movies here, but Christopher Lloyd is in that. And he's like, does he kidnap Dennis? I just remember him and like baked beans, baked beans, baked beans and like heaps of farting and he was really sweaty. Does anyone remember? Am I? No, I'm I'm right. It's the children who are wrong. Doc just said to get the DeLorean to go, you need 1.21 gigawatts of electricity, which he can only get through plutonium because it's the 80s. Has anyone actually tried to make this in real life? Because that would be 
would we want that? See, this is my whole thing with time travel is that if you go back, like, will anything actually say you're on? Okay. Back to the future science is that like you go back in time and everything is as it was in that time. That means that every millisecond we are either imprinting or there's like an infinite amount of us that is being, yeah, like 3D printed along the way. Or would you go back on this timeline and there would be nothing there? This question will drive me to a place that I don't want to be in if I keep thinking about it. So I'm just going to say that, yeah, you'll go back and you'll get to see your younger self and it'll be great. Oh no, panic. Okay, there's Libyan people who have come to take the plutonium. I think they should have just gone with government people, right? Like men in black or something. One's going to shoot Doc. Boom, 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 dead. Oh no. Now Marty's like, oh shit. Now they're shooting at him. Then to get away, Marty jumps in the DeLorean. Drive, drive, drive. Doc's dead. We met Doc for, you know, 10 minutes. Dead. Anyway, this is just a driving scene. Driving, 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 shooting, driving. Fast and Furious, 10. Now Marty's pumping on the gas and apparently forgetting the 88 miles per hour thing and forgetting that they just put plutonium in and that the time travel elements of the DeLorean are ready to go. Now, Marty says, let's see if you bastards can do 90. And then he bloody pedal to the metal. Electricity, bump, 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 Do is lightning. And now we're back in, who knows? Because he was headed towards the mall. And then he ran over a scarecrow. And now he's crashed the DeLorean into an old barn. A farm barn. Um, Yeah, there's people who own the farm. And they're like, oh my god, what is that? It's a spaceship. That's not a kid. The girl... Okay, if you're watching along with me, the girl in the barn, she looks about 30. Now he's like, where the fuck am I? See, I like, I think what I like about this movie is that, I don't know about anybody else, but I talk to myself a lot. Like, if I was in this situation, I would out loud be saying like, what is happening? I'm okay. I'm okay, right? This is fine, right? Which I like that they've put in for Marty instead of having some like internal battle like no like you're you're talking out loud everything's insane now there's people they're old cars and they're all dressed real fancy pants and he's like oh no what have I done and now we're getting a beautiful song called Mr. Sandman and now we're walking around Hill Valley and it looks the same but it's sparkly pristine the clock tower's beautiful and clean okay so now marty's in the milk bar and he's calling up doc brown not the 80s doc brown that we already met the 1955 doc brown we meet biff but not the biff we met the 1955 biff and he's hot but he's a dick. And I love the guy with the glasses on. He's got 3D glasses. If you know, you know. Now, in the second one, let me just do a little bit of trivia. Billy Zane is one of the henchmen, is one of Biff's henchmen. Billy fucking Zane. I love Billy Zane. I've only seen like two things he's in, which is Titanic and Zoolander. Marty was following his dad and his dad was a peeping Tom in a tree and he fell out of the tree. There was a car coming and Marty was like, look out, look out and pushed his dad out of the way. And then Marty got hit by the car. The person whose car it was took him in to their house and it turns out to be his mum Lorraine's dad that hit him with the car because we already know that it was meant to be George that got hit by the car and that's how they met and fell in love but now Marty's taken the place of his dad in the past and now his mum has the hots for him and she's taken him in and put him in her bed and taken his pants off and she keeps calling him Calvin. What was the purpose of writing the name in the underwear just in case you lost it yeah but what are you doing where you think you're gonna lose your underwear in a day what are you doing what were they doing in 1955 pe gym why would you change your underwear at gym just you know i didn't ever change my is that am i weird am i disgusting for not changing my underwear after i exercise do i have to do that after a shower wait a minute am i exposing myself am i a dirty pig Oh, God. Okay, so now Marty is meeting his grandmother. That would fuck me up. 
I reckon. That would really mess with my brain. Marty's holding it together pretty well. Okay, now Lorraine's like, I think he's really injured. He should stay the night. And then she touches Marty's leg sexually. Why is this my favourite movie? Because it's fun and sci-fi. But these bits are problematic and we need to talk about them. <laughs> I like this bit. The dad, like Lorraine's dad, is like, um, that guy was weird it's from his upbringing. His parents are probably idiots. I think that's really funny. Um, now, Marty's going to find Doc Brown. Marty is like, you need to help me because you're the only one who knows how the time machine works. And I need help because I'm stuck in 1955 and I need to go back to the future. And that's how they came up with the title of the movie. And that's it. That's it for the podcast. That's it. No, I'm just kidding. There's so much more of this movie to go. Oh, God. Okay, now Marty's showing Doc a picture of he and his siblings. But what's happening is in the photo, the siblings are disappearing because the more that Lorraine falls for her own son, it means that She won't fall for George. Now, we're driving to the DeLorean. He's like, I need to prove to you that you made a time travel thing. And Doc is like, oh, uh, you know more than you laid on, little boy. Um, He doesn't say that, but maybe you should. And now he's fascinated by the video recording device. The video recording device? The camera? The video camera. I haven't had to say video camera in a long time because we all just record on our phones. Video camera. Video recording device. A VRD. Oh my god, Lily Hensby. Okay, now he's like watching himself back and the 85 doc is like, you're gonna need 1.25 gigawatts of electricity. And doc is like, get fucked. He's like, I'll, the only thing that can make that much electricity is a bolt of lightning from the heavens above. He's like, oh fuck, when are we even gonna know when there's lightning? And then Marty is like, Wait a minute, I have a flyer with Jennifer's number on it saying I love you and on the other side of the flyer it says the clock tower saved the clock tower because it was struck by lightning in 1955. Oh, what a good sprout. See, people, the seed was planted in the beginning and now we're getting the payoff. And we didn't need to be reminded about the lightning of the clock tower that whole time because we're just following Marty on his little trip. But we then realized that it was a point at the beginning. And oh, that's how you're right. Next Saturday night, we're sending you back to the future. They say it in the movie. And Marty's like, cool, I can spend a week in 1955. I'll hang out with my parents. And Doc is like, are you crazy? You can't go around hanging out with your mum and dad in 1955. And he's like, oh, but why? He's like, because if you do anything to change anything, the future will be all fucked up. It'll be all cooked because of you, Marty Worm McFly. Um, way f- fly m- m- yay. How do you do a pig Latin muck name? So now Marty looks gorgeous in this 1955 get up. He's got his high waisted pants, he's got a red leather jacket, red leather, yellow leather, red leather, yellow leather jacket. And it's so cool, this movie, because it, it, it stays in its own world. We only stay in Marty's world and we just revisit the things that we've already seen in the first act of the movie. We go back to the school. We see his parents. We see his house. We see Doc. We see this. Da, 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 da. You know, it doesn't have to tell us what's happening anywhere else. It's just this enclosed little story. And that's what makes it good. It's it's so specific. Now Marty's like, I'm going to hang out with my dad. I'll try and get my dad to hook up with my mom. And Doc's like, mm, could be on. But now Marty's gone up to Lorraine and been like, yo. And she's like, <gasps> gushing, gushing at the puss. You know, she loves him. And I wonder if that's because deep down she knows that they have a connection and it's some weird maternal incest thing. But we don't need to talk about the psychology of the characters because we're just here to, for fun, light, and entertainment. That my mother has got the hots for me. Got the hots. I, I'm going to bring that back. I got the hots for this person. I'm bringing it back. Did it ever go away? 
If it did, I'm bringing it back. And now Doc notices a poster and he calls it a rhythmic ceremonial ritual, which is the Saturday night dance, enchantment under the sea dance. And that's where they had their first kiss, as we find out in the first act of the movie. And you know it's a happy movie and it comes out good because I think it's rated PG, so you know they have to win. You know Marty has to win. So we're going to end in a murder and like, you know, Marty's fucking you know in debt to biff imagine imagine like a real brutal real gritty like um david fincher type (laughs) so david fincher back to the future where it's real gritty and it's oh that's funny that's making me laugh real gritty and there's murders and there's like um I'm thinking of just Zodiac now. Yeah, there's like it's, uh, there's some Zodiac thing that Marty needs to find out to be able to get back to the future. Um, and so Sig- Sigourney Weaver's in it for some reason. And um, sh- she comes in. She's like, do you have the code yet? And Marty's like, I'm still trying to figure it out, man. You know, it's heavy here in the, in the past. And Sigourney Weaver's like, listen, you need to do this Zodiac code. Otherwise, I'm going to kill you and your parents in front of you. And if I kill your parents, then you will just not exist. And he's like, well, then how will you kill me? And she's like, with my magic. Because they had to imagine, would David Fincher do a magic movie? Yeah, he would. He would if the script was as ridiculous as this is. Am I going to write this thing? No, I'm not. Right, now Lorraine's in the milk bar. Milk bar? Dairy? What are they called? Milkshake place? Diner. (sighs) Jesus, Hensby. And George is like, what do I even say to a hot babe? And Marty's like, I don't know, tell her that like destiny brought you together. And so George is writing it down. You know, if a dude came up to me with a little notebook and was like, Lily, you are my destiny, I'd be like, holy shit. I'd laugh at them, but then be like, sit down. <laughs> Let me talk. What's going on? But then also I'd be like, are you making fun of me? He's walking up to her slowly. He's got his little notebook and he talks like this. All right, you are my density. And she's like, Excuse me? Fucking speak up, cunt. And he's like, oh, fuck, Lorraine, not my density, my... And then she's like, wait a minute, don't I know you? And it's basically that scene from Mean Girls. Sit down. Why don't I know you? I just moved here. Shut up. It's that scene. And then Biff comes in and Biff's like, what the fuck? I told you to never come in here, McFly. And George is like, oh, my God, I can't catch a fucking break. Now, Marty trips Biff, and we get that beautiful image of Biff standing up straight, and then Marty sort of, we see Marty's eyeballs over Biff's shoulders and being like, whoa, he looks so tall. Marty punches the shit out of him, and then he runs the fuck away. And Lorraine is like, oh my God, that's Calvin Klein. He's a dream. No, Lorraine, that is your kid. Um, Now, Marty has found a skateboard that he stole off a kid, and he's skating. So these kids had scooters and he broke the scooter and made it into a skateboard. When was the skateboard invented? Let me have a look. See, we're getting, you don't only getting like a nice time with me. You're also learning about stuff like that. The skateboard was invented in 1959. Well, in the Back to the Future universe, it was invented and made in 1955 by the one and only Marty McFly. That's sick. Biff and gang are in a car, in a fucking nice black car. That car is sick. Now, there's a truck of manure, and now the car is going into the shit. Does. Which becomes a trope in this film with Biff. When you think of Biff, you think of him covered in poo-poo. George is like, you know what? I'm going to fucking bash the shit out of Biff. (laughs) He's like, I'm fucking done with this bullying. I'm going to stand up to that motherfucker. And he is confiding in Marty about it. He's like, how do you do it? You're brave. And Marty's like, I'm only brave because I don't have to fucking be here that long. Whoa. Shouldn't that be our motto in life? I'm only brave because I don't have to be here that long. It's the night of nights. Marty's dressed to the nines in his little suit because he's got to go to the dance. Now, Marty's writing a letter. He's like, dear Doc Brown, the night that I go back in time, you're going to cock it your friend, Marty. Yeah, I think they're friends, but it's a big age gap. But maybe, Doc, hey, maybe it's a lot darker than what we think. We're like, oh, it's a bit weird. Like, yeah, a 60-year-old guy hanging out with a 17-year-old. Maybe Doc Brown had a kid and that kid died 
and he's filling the gap of that kid with Marty. Now that's beautiful and that's sad. So fuck you guys. Now we've got the enchantment under the sea dance. Look at that decoration. We've got some Kmart foil in the back, balloons. Now Marty driving the car and is parked and Lorraine is like, and oh that's right okay so what's happening is marty's decided that a good way to get george and lorraine together is if marty sexually harasses and assaults lorraine in the car so then george will come and get marty out and punch him which sounds horrific And probably the worst plan in history. So Lorraine is party girl. She's just pulled out a bottle of whiskey. Gross. And drinks it. Now there's a blooper and they've tricked Michael J. Fox and they actually gave him a legit bottle of whiskey and he drinks it. And then he's like, oh shit, and spits it out. And they're all laughing at him. Don't do that to people. George is checking the time and he's like, oh shit, they'll be in the parking lot now. I got to go and save Lorraine from Marty's fake rape attempt jesus christ see if this was a fincher film this would be brutal it's on the cusp it could get there so lorraine's like smoking a ciggy and she's drinking and she's like it's not like i've never parked before now she's leaning in and marty's like no and now they're kissing he's kissing his mom he's kissing his mom and now she stops because she's like Ugh, what the fuck was that about ick ick sticks the door opens and marty's like oh here's george and george, like someone pulls him out of the car but it's biff it's actually biff and so it's like oh wait a minute this fake plan is now going to turn into a real plan because biff's like look at what we got here and jumps in the car with lorraine and grabs her and it's very traumatic so now all the henchmen are taking marty away because of michael j fox you can just lift him up stew a little just lift him up and they put him in the boot of a car the boot of the car of the band and then all the band come out and they're all smoking like they've toked up the car so they're chilling now george is running and he can see in the car that like marty and lorraine are going at it but remember it's not marty so george has all this confidence he's like yep and he's like hey you get your damn hands off her and then turns around and it's Biff. And Biff is like, you got the wrong car. And the rain is like, George, help me. Because he is sexually assaulting me. And Biff's just like, go away, George. And George is like, no, Biff. You leave her alone. Thank fuck. Imagine if he walked away. In the Fincher version of this, he would have walked away. Oh, God. So now George is like, I'm about to get beaten. And he goes um, he goes to punch Biff, but Biff puts him in a bloody arm hold. Punch him. Come on, George. The tension here. We see a shot of George's fist forming. And Biff's laughing, but then his face drops because George whacks him in the face. Kapow, blam, splat. He goes to the floor, dead. Biff's not dead. And now Lorraine is like, oh my God, you punched a man. And George is like, are you okay? That's how he says it. Are you okay? And she's like, yeah. Well, you're not, babe. You're going to have some trauma. Yeah, let's hope George can be there for you throughout your, you know, processing of that. And now they're together and Marty's like, oh my God, thank fuck. But also we've rewritten the future because George punched Biff, which had never happened before. Lorraine's like, George, are you going to kiss me? Now this other fucking doofus comes in, brace face, cuts in. Why are these people just taking over the women? And Marty's playing the song, but now he's feeling real faint because the further Lorraine gets away from George and the the longer it takes takes for them to kiss, the more he's not going to be born. Um, And so he looks at the photo of himself and he's fading. And now he puts his hand up and it's the most beautiful green screen crap And it fades. It starts fading. He's got an invisible hand. So now George cuts in, throws that brace face to the ground. And I can say brace face because I had braces. Um, And now they're kissing. Mm -mm -mm -mm. And now Marty's fucking back to life, energized. The Red Bull has kicked in. And all the the photos come back. It's a normal photo again. Mum and dad are going to be banging. So we're born. And now people in the dance are like, oh, George, I heard that you knocked out Biff. You should run for school president. Fuck yeah, George. Fucking ride that wave. Now, the band are rocking. Heavy, yeah, the subtitle's saying, playing heavy metal riffs. He fucking is. He's going for it. Go, Marty. Guitar behind the head. Guitar on the ground. And then he realizes that everything has stopped because everybody's looking at him like he's a freak. And he's like, uh, uh, um, 
Sorry about that. Then he runs into Lorraine. She's like, I'm sorry. I know that we came to the dance together, but I want to be with George. And Marty's like, yeah, about fucking time. Yes, thank you. Okay, so now we're back with Doc. Marty comes around the corner, coming around the mountain when he comes. And he's like, I'm sorry, I was late. I was watching my parents fuck and I also had to change my outfit. So now they're getting everything ready. He's going to send him back like he'd never left. Now Doc and Marty are saying their goodbyes. See ya, was great to meet ya. Michael J. Fox's hair is blowing in the wind and it looks beautiful. And they have this beautiful, nice hug. See you in about 30 years. Did I explain what the whole science is? So they've put a cord around two light posts and then that cord is connected up to the clock tower where the lightning will strike so that the lightning will come down over these two cords now at the perfect moment of the lightning strike there's a in the delorean they've put a big copper hook on there so the hook will latch on to the cord that's going between the two light posts and you know perfect moment has to happen all at the same time the lightning will activate the copper rod in the delorean that's connected to the flux capacitor and thus marty will be traveling back so now what just happened is um the the storm is building right and a tree branch has fallen and disconnected the cord that connects from the light posts to the clock tower so now doc has to go up and reconnect the cord. And time is running out. I don't know if you know much about this film after this long of me talking about it, but time is the main motif. Doc is... He got up that clock tower quick and it was open. Anyway, so he has to then climb out and see these gargoyles and... Um, I've only recently discovered I have a mad fear of heights when it comes to like if there's no railing, I will probably spew or get vertigo. Um, so this scene always makes me feel a little bit dizzy and physically ill because if I was that high up without a railing, oh god, even thinking about it, you know those parkour videos where they're up really high and they just do a flip on a ledge with no railing? Like I, I'm get. <sighs> I feel I'm going to, I've gone pale. I can't, oh God, makes me, ugh. Now, Doc found the letter in his pocket and he's like, I told you not to tell me anything. But Marty's like, no, you have to know because I don't want you to die. Now, the clock is striking. So that means the lightning's coming. We know what time the lightning's coming. You have to go, Marty. But Marty's trying to tell him and it's all, it's all very stressful all right marty's in the delorean doc is trying to reach for this is the bit that makes me ill oh god he's on a ledge and there's no he's holding on to it oh i can't uh, i'm just gonna have to watch this i can't even talk about it oh and his foot nearly slips oh that is oh my god okay marty's at the starting line he's got the copper hook i mean it's smart it makes sense to me we'll put the power source in copper i know that's scientific okay now marty's like man i really need you to save uh, to be saved from getting shot if only i had more time then he's like (laughs) wait a minute so he gives himself another 10 minutes all right he's ready to go and now the engine dies so you know zemeckis was like let's just make it hell um now doc's still up on the clock tower trying to reach for this cord and it's making me ill because like sometimes your balance you know your equilibrium fucks out on you and imagine just like falling oh god it's time like Marty has to go. You know, they've got, it's a tight sketch. Okay, it's working because he hit his head on the on the horn and it beeped and it went. But Doc still hasn't connected up the two cords. Now he gets his balance and he does. But the lightning is seriously, legitimately about to fucking strike. You just better go. Okay, he goes to pull in the cord, but it, it won't reach. It's stuck because the tree branch. Oh God, it, this is hell. I'm stressed and I've seen this movie probably over a hundred times and I know it's going to happen and I know it's going to be fine, but this bit is so stressful because they just fucking, they oh, they stretch it out for so long. Okay, so now Doc pulls the cord and it unplugs on the other end. Oh my God. Okay, so Marty's going 61 miles per hour. It's, you know, we're getting there. Go Doc, Jesus. He's like realized what he's done for 80 minutes. So now he's, come on, plug it back in. Go, 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 go. The lightning's coming. Plug it back in, Doc. Hurry up. Okay, he does. Plugging it in. 
doors. Now he's like, I got to get down there fast. How am I going to get off this clock tower really quick? Oh, I know. I will make a flying fox. Is that what they're called? Zip line. Zip line. And he zips. Down he goes. Woo. And you'd think that that would unplug the other side, but it doesn't because he's looped it around the, the clock, the hands of the clock. Yeah, it's smart. Okay, Marty's at 88 miles per hour and the other side is still unplugged. Now Doc is going, going, go, 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 go. The lightning's hitting now. And the lightning travels down the cord and Doc plugs it in and gets electrocuted and Marty's gone. And it's all quiet. Oh my God, it's so beautiful. Imagine this in the cinema. Oh my God. Okay, now Doc is just so happy that it worked. He's cheering and he's happy and it's beautiful. And the beautiful music by Alan Silvestri's, you know, da -na -na -na. And now Doc looks up at the clock tower and we see the clock tower and then a helicopter goes over. And we're like, oh, not many helicopters in the 50s. Were there? Let me have a look. And now we're hearing like an 80s song and then we see the DeLorean come back. Okay, yeah, so the, the helicopter was made in the fucking, what? 400 BC? Huh? Okay, so, yeah, there could have been a helicopter in the 50s. Did you know about this helicopter thing? Let me just pause the movie for a sec. I need to read about this. Helicopters. The earliest references for vertical flight came from China. Since around 400 BC, Chinese children have played with bamboo flying toys or Chinese top. Oh, okay, cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, like, that, um, the device of, you know, like, spinning tops. Um, so, you spin it with a stick and it creates a lifting... So yeah, that device, that sort of element of a helicopter has been around since 400 BC. And then designs similar to the Chinese helicopter toy appeared in some Renaissance paintings and other works in the 18th and early 19th centuries. Wow. It was not until the early 1480s when Italian, uh, yes, Leonardo da Vinci created a design for a machine that could be described as an aerial screw that any recorded advancement was made towards vertical flight. <gasps> there you go, everybody. Sick. Helicopter knowledge. Okay, back to the future. Play. Marty's looking around. He's like, please let this be the hill valley that I'm from. And then he sees the Libyans who are the ones to shoot Doc. And instead of getting back in the DeLorean, he runs after them. But I think they did the... the, 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 the did the DeLorean break? Maybe it was still broken. But he fucking runs to the mall. And it's 1.33 a.m. So he's a bit too late. And he sees Doc get shot. And then he also sees himself. He's just watching the whole scene that we've already seen play out. And then Michael J. Fox makes a choice in this moment that I think about all the time. Instead of just walking down the hill or running down the hill, he throws his body down the hill and rolls as if that would be faster. And then the Libyans crash their combi into something. And then the Marty that goes down to see Doc. Oh, no, Doc's dead. Oh, fuck. And then Doc opens his eyes and sits up. And Marty's like, huh? And Doc's like, I'm wearing a bulletproof vest, bitch. And Marty's like, how did you know? Because I never got to tell you. And then he pulls out the letter, the ripped up letter, and he'd Dickie taped it back together and Marty's like, but you fucking, you dog, you said it would ruin the future. And Doc's like, yeah, but I love life. Um, now Doc's dropping Marty off at home. See you, kid. And Marty's like, where are you going to go? And he's like, I could go anywhere. Where would you guys go? Leave it in the comments. No. Where would you, where would I go? I'd, ooh, would I want to go forward? I'd want to go forward to see if it gets any better. Then... I'd probably want to go back and see all like the cool moments in history and just sort of be there and just sort of appear in photographs. Okay, so now Marty's back in his room having a little snoozy, little snoozy woozy boozy. Um, and Marty's like, whoa, what a nightmare. And he walks out into his living room and he's like, what? A doing? It's all beautiful, like a magazine. And Linda and Dave are dressed in their business wear because they work at an office. And Linda's like, I've got so many boyfriends. And Marty's like, what the hell is this? And Linda's like, breakfast. And then Lorraine and George walk in from their morning tennis and they are 
smoking. You know, they've been upkeeping their sunscreen, their skincare routine. George is hot. They're just happy, you know, life loving people. And um, Linda's like, now Jennifer called. And Lorraine is like, I like her, Marty. I really like her. And remember in the beginning, she said that she didn't like her because they've changed. Because through being brave and their self-esteem rising through George's act of violence against Biff, they've realized that they can be successful, sexy babies. And so Lorraine was like, so you're going to take Jennifer up to the lake? And Marty's like, well, I can't because the car's wrecked. Remember, the car was wrecked because Biff crashed it. And then George is like, what do you mean the car's wrecked? And they go out the front and they check the car and Biff is there dressed in a teal Adidas tracksuit, but he's waxing the car. And he's like, oh, I'm sorry, Mr. McFly. He's the dweeb now. He's the worm. And then Biff comes in with a delivery in this beautiful teal Adidas tracksuit. If you, next time you see me and I'm wearing a teal Adidas tracksuit, you can bet your bottom dollar that it was inspired by Biff Tannen. In the delivery is George's novel, his little sci-fi novel. Biff is like, oh, by the way, Marty, here's your keys. You're all waxed up. And Marty's like, my keys? And he opens the garage and in the garage is the motherfucking sexy black four-wheel drive that he wanted when he saw it earlier with Jennifer. And then to make matters better, Jennifer walks in and she's like, hey, babe. And he's like, oh, my God, I can't believe I'm so happy to see you. (gasps) It's been years. And she's like, I saw you yesterday. And everybody's happy and they're kissing and it's all sexy. And then lightning, the DeLorean pulls up in the driveway and knocks over a trash can. And Marty's like, oh, fuck, I literally just got home. Can you leave me alone? Doc steps out of the car and he's dressed in this beautiful golden robe and he has a clear tie. We need to be dressing like this now. The DeLorean's had an upgrade. We don't need plutonium anymore. We just need some trash. So in the original draft of the script, this is true, the time machine wasn't going to be a DeLorean. It was going to be a fridge. And so Marty would hop in a fridge and go around traveling throughout time in a fridge. And I'm so glad they got rid of that. Okay, and then, sorry, I talked over the ending. So what happened was, Billy Zane was in this one. <gasps> Billy! Oh, I thought he was only in the second one. Oh, Billy Zane. Mm. Okay, so what happened is, Doc is like, Marty, you got to come back to the future. And he's like, why? And he's like, it's your kids, Marty. They go. So they take Jennifer this time. Okay, so that's the end. I have a sore throat. Thank you for joining me on this. Um, I don't know what movie I'll do next time, but I'm just really excited that I've started this. And if you're joining me along the way, um, cheers. And if you hate it, um, well, you can go fuck yourself. (laughs) 